This video is going to introduce you to something called the distributive property. This property is something that you guys are going to be using in your math careers from now all the way until high school, college. Um, so it's something that is going to come up quite a bit. So please make sure you're taking notes on your note sheet as I go through this. All right, so I'm going to describe the distributive property. I'm going to tell you what it is and how it works. And then I'll show you an example. So first thing, what it is. Um, it tells us how many groups of something there are. So it basically tells us how many groups of whatever we're working with. And we're going to use it to simplify expressions with variables. Okay, so that's kind of important. And then the how, how it works. All right, how the distributive property works is you're going to multiply the outside number by every number or variable on the inside. And then your second step is keep the operation signs the same. All right, so that's how it works. All right, so here's an example of how it works. So we have the problem 2 times 3 plus 4. So you guys know whenever a number is right next to a set of parentheses, that means times. So you need to start to kind of remember that. So how this works is this number on the outside can actually tell us how many groups we're working with. So it actually can mean I have two groups of whatever's inside here. So two groups of 3 plus 4. So let's kind of think about it. I'm just going to draw it with like uh, integer chips. So let's say here's a group of three, okay, plus my group of four, one, two, three, four. Okay, I'm just using circles. Now it says I have two groups of that, so I'm going to draw another three plus four. Okay, so if you kind of look at that, again, you can see a three plus four and another three plus four. So I want to know how much is that total. Well, it looks like I have six, right, these six here plus eight, which is 14. So this whole thing actually equals 14, all right? And I showed you that by drawing a picture, two groups of everything inside here. Now, another way to think of that is you could actually solve this using the order of operations that we've done in the past. So let's go inside the parentheses and do 3 plus 4 is 7. So inside there, I get a 7, and now it says times it by 2. Well, that gives me 14, all right? So here's another way that it works. Okay, so I know my answer is 14. I showed it with pictures. I showed it by following the order of operations. So now I'm going to show you how the distributive work property works so that we get the same answer. So, All right, so basically what the distributive property says is you can take this outside number, 2, and you can actually times it by both of the things inside. Now let me show you kind of how we're going to show it in math. What you can do is you can take this 2 and distribute it to the 3. Distribute mean, kind of means like you're taking it to both parts. So you can actually do 2 times 3, so think that's 6. And then I'm also going to do 2 times 4, which is 8. And then I'm just going to keep this plus sign in the middle. So now let's actually work that out. 6 plus 8, that gives me 14. Now think about that when I drew my picture. Okay, I did draw 2 groups of 3, right? That was the 6. And 2 groups of 4, which gave me the 8. So this is the distributive property, where you're just taking that number and distributing it, distributing or timesing it by both of the numbers on the inside. Okay, let me just prove another one to you that it works. Let's do 5 times 1 plus 3 plus 2. Now there's a lot of things on the inside. Okay, I'm going to just do this first using the order of operations. I'm going to do inside the parentheses. So I have 1 plus 3 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So really this says 5 parentheses 6. And remember, when you see two numbers right next to each other, that means times. So 5 times 6 is 30. All right, now I'm going to do it using the distributive property. And I'm just going to kind of write it over here. So what you can do is you're going to take that outside number, times it by every single thing inside. So I'm going to think like I'm doing five groups of one. Well, that's five. Then it says plus. Five groups of three, that's 15. And five groups of two, which is 10. Okay, now if I add that up, 5 and 15 is 20 plus 10 is 30. I get the same answer using the distributive property. All right, so now I'm going to show you one where I have a variable. So I have a number that I don't know. So I really don't know what x equals. So that's why it's called x. So I still want to try to simplify this expression. So what you can do is this means you're taking five groups of this, everything inside here. So let's just kind of think about it. If I was going to write this out the long way, five groups of x plus 2. That would be like I had an x plus 2, an x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2. 
There's five groups of it. Now let's kind of see what, how many we have. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5x, plus I have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So that actually equals 5x plus 10, if I kind of drew a picture out of that. Now let's do it using the distributive property. So I'm going to take this 5, I'm going to multiply it by everything inside here. This is kind of why I draw this little arrow. So I'm going to do 5 times x, and I know I can write that like this, 5x. Keep your plus symbol, and then I'm going to do 5 times 2, which I know is 10. So I just simplified this expression to equal 5x plus 10 using the distributive property. So this is a simplified, this down here is a simplified way to write this expression out. All right, so we have another one. We have four times all of this in the parentheses, x minus two. Okay, so if I wanted to draw a picture of this out, I have four groups of x minus two. So I'm gonna draw x minus two, there's one group, x minus two, x minus two, x minus two. There's four groups of it. So now I'm gonna just combine my like terms. I have one, two, three, four x's, and then I have negative two, negative four, negative six, negative eight, so minus eight. That's what that would equal. Now I'm gonna do it using the distributive property, which you're gonna to have to start using. You can take four times the first number, so four times x, I'm gonna rewrite as four x, keep your symbol in the middle, minus, and then do four times two, which is eight. So I simplify that to equal 4x minus 8. All right, I want you to try these two when you're finished, or push pause when you're finished, push play so you can see me go through them. All right, so the first one, again, you can take 3 times the first number, 3 times n, that's the same as writing 3n, keep your plus sign, and then do 3 times 4, which is 12. So that really equals 3n plus 12. Now, keep in mind, I really don't know what n is right now, but if I did know what it is, I could kind of plug that in. Okay, let's come to this one. I'm going to distribute 5 times n, which is 5n. Keep your plus sign, plus, do 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 5 times k, which is 5k. All right, here is my simplified expression. All right, so now we're actually gonna write down the mathematical rule for the distributed property. So here's what it kind of looks like. So it's saying that when you have something that looks like this, a number or a letter and then parentheses um, and some stuff on the inside, you should always distribute. So I'm gonna rewrite it as A times B. So I know I can write A times B as A times B right next to each other. Keep the symbol in the middle plus and then you do that outside number times this one. So A times C, I can write as AC. So that's the correct way to actually write the distributive property mathematically. All right, we're gonna try one with some negative signs. So we have negative three now times this stuff. So same thing, here's what you can do. You're gonna multiply that negative three times everything inside there. So I'm gonna start by doing, what's negative three times X? Well, I can just rewrite that as negative 3x. Okay, you can keep your minus sign. So you can keep that minus sign. And then you can do negative 3 times 5. Okay, so negative 3 times 5 I know is negative 15. Okay, now something that you would want to do after this is, if you guys see this here, I really don't like subtraction, so I'm going to turn this to add the opposite. So a better way to write this one is negative 3x plus 15. Okay, so that would be my answer for that one. All right, let's try another one. So this time I'm going to do negative 8 times 2, which I know is negative 16. Okay, I'm going to keep my minus sign. And then I have negative 8 times x. Well, I know negative 8 times x is negative 8x. Okay, now I see um, a subtraction sign, so I'm going to add the opposite, so really it says negative 16 plus 8x. All right, I wanna show you guys one quick way to rewrite this. If that was kinda of confusing for you, you could actually kinda of do this as well. Okay, some people right away like to just change this to add the opposite. If that helps you, you can do that. So now you have negative eight times two, which is negative 16. Now it says plus, and then a negative times a negative is a positive 8x. You get the same answer, so if you prefer to do that, you can go ahead and do that as well. All right, let's try another one. Um, the directions for this problem would be to simplify as much as you can. 
So first thing that I'm going to notice is here is um, the distributive property. So I'm going to multiply 4 times x, which is 4x. Keep my plus sign. I'm going to do 4 times 2, which is 8. Okay, so I took care of the distributive property. Now I'm just going to rewrite everything else. Plus 2x minus 6. All right, yesterday in class we did combining like terms. So now you need to combine your like terms. Remember I like to circle or box my like terms. So I have 4x plus 2x. That would give me 6x's. Okay, I'm going to cross those off. All right, and then I also have plus 8 and minus 6. So that's like an 8 and then minus 6, which would give me plus 2. So I just simplified that expression as much as I could. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. Um, this one, again, has some distributive property back here. So here's what you need to do on one like this. Just keep the 3x out front. Okay, now this minus sign actually goes with the 3. Think of that as kind of a negative 3. So we're going to actually distribute this. I'm going to do negative 3 times x, which is going to give me negative 3x, and then do negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6, which I'm just going to write as minus 6. Okay, if that's too confusing for you, you guys can go ahead and add the opposite right here and then do your distributing. Okay, negative 3 times x, negative 3 times 2. Okay, so just so you know, you can also do that. All right, now I needed to combine my like terms. I have 3x and negative 3x. Well, 3x plus negative 3x is actually 0, so those are gone. So all I have left is negative 6. So my final answer is negative 6. All right, I want to show you one more like this. Okay, again, I see some distributive property here. So I'm going to keep my 2 the same. Okay, and then it says minus 5. Think of this as a negative 5 when you multiply. So I'm going to do negative 5 times 2x. Well, a negative times a positive is a negative, so I'm just going to write minus 10x. Okay, now inside here, this is like a negative 4. You have to do negative 5 times negative 4. A negative times a negative, that's a positive 20. Okay, and then plus 3. All right, so now I need to see if there's any like terms for me to combine. I'll start with my x's. There's no other x's, so I'm just going to write negative 10x. Okay, I use that. All right, now I'm going to go to my normal numbers. I have 2 plus 20 plus 3. Okay, well, that equals 25. So my final answer is negative 10x plus 25. All right, so just so you guys know, we're mostly going to focus on positive ones, but I just wanted to throw a couple of these negative ones in just to show you how they're done, okay?